What is the scariest short story you've ever read? There is one that scared the living shit out of me when I was younger. A young boy is sleeping in his bed on a usual night. He hears footsteps outside his door and peeks out of his eyes to see what is happening. His door swings open quietly to reveal a murderer carrying the corpses of his parents. After silently propping them up on a chair, he writes something on the wall in the blood of the dead bodies. He then hides under the child's bed. The child is scared beyond belief. He can't read the writing on the wall, and he knows the man is under his bed. Like any child, he pretends that he slept through the whole thing and hasn't awoken yet. He lays still as the bodies, quietly hearing the breaths from under his bed. An hour passes, and his eyes are adjusting more and more to the darkness. He tries to make out the words, but it's a struggle. He gasps when he finally makes out the sentence. I know you're awake. He feels something shift underneath his bed. I heard a good one a while back. Mommy told me never to go in the basement, but I wanted to see what was making that noise. It sounded like a puppy, and I wanted to see it, so I opened the basement door and tiptoed down a bit. I didn't see a puppy, and then Mommy yanked me out of the basement and yelled at me. Mommy had never yelled at me before, and it made me sad, and I cried. Then Mommy told me never to go into the basement again, and she gave me a cookie. That made me feel better, so I didn't ask her why the boy in the basement was making noises like a puppy or why he had no hands or feet. There is a short story in diary format about a young boy who was an immune carrier of a deadly disease that would be a pandemic if he were released from his hospital isolation. One day he wakes up and, discovering his kitchen emptied and nobody in the entire facility, he goes to his window to see that the town has been evacuated. He breaks out of his home and goes out into the world alone, leaving one last diary entry apologizing for leaving because he knows he's not supposed to, but he is really hungry and scared. I don't know what it's called, but I'm pretty sure it's by Stephen King, and while mentioning his work may be a cop-out, this story did stick with me on a weird level. When I was a child, my family moved to a big old two-floor house with empty rooms and creaking floorboards. Both my parents worked, so I was often alone when I came home from school. One early evening when I came home, the house was still dark. I called out, Mom? And heard her sing-song voice say, Yes? From upstairs. I called her again as I climbed the stairs to see which room she was in and again got the same EEOEs. Reply. We were decorating at the time, and I didn't know my way around the maze of rooms, but she was in one of the far ones, right down the hall. I felt uneasy, but I figured that was only natural, so I rushed forward to see my mum, knowing that her presence would calm my fears, as a mother's presence always does. Just as I reached for the door handle to let myself into the room, I heard the front door downstairs open, and my mother called, Sweetie, are you home? in a cheery voice. I jumped back, startled and ran down the stairs to her, but as I glanced back from the top of the stairs, the door to the room slowly opened a crack. For a brief moment, I saw something strange in there, and I didn't know what it was, but it was staring at me. There was a hunter in the woods, who, after a long day hunting, was in the middle of an immense forest. It was getting dark, and having lost his bearings. He decided to head in one direction until he was clear of the increasingly oppressive foliage. After what seemed like hours, he came across a cabin in a small clearing. Realizing how dark it had grown, he decided to see if he could stay there for the night. He approached and found the door ajar. Nobody was inside. The hunter flopped down on the single bed, deciding to explain himself to the owner in the morning. As he looked around, he was surprised to see the walls adorned with many portraits, all painted in incredible detail. Without exception, they appeared to be staring down at him, their features twisted into looks of hatred. Staring back, he grew increasingly uncomfortable. Making a concerted effort to ignore the many hateful faces, he turned to face the wall, and exhausted. He fell into a restless sleep. 
Face down in an unfamiliar bed, he turned, blinking in unexpected sunlight. Looking up, he discovered that the cabin had no portraits, only windows. A man goes to an old hotel. He gets his key from the reception and heads off to his room. As he walks down the hall to his room, he hears crying from behind one of the doors in the corridor. He stops at the door the crying is coming from and looks through the keyhole. A woman in black with wrinkled hands coved in liver spots and her face covered by a veil is sitting on a stool in the corner of the room sobbing. The man asks if she needs help. She doesn't answer. He asks again, and the reply continues to be nothing but crying. The man decides that he's too tired to help and continues to his room. The next morning, as he walks down the same hall to reception, he remembers the old woman. He goes to her door and hears silence. He peeks through the keyhole and sees nothing but red. The man gives up and goes to the reception to check out. As he leaves, he mentions the crying women in the room to the receptionist. The receptionist turns pale and says that that room is said to be haunted by an old woman. The man laughs it off and heads to the door. He is stopped when the receptionist says the ghost is an old woman with red eyes. A long time ago, there was a pretty little girl who had a green ribbon around her neck. One day she went to school and met a boy named Jim. Jim sat behind her in class and noticed the ribbon under her pigtails. Why do you wear that ribbon around your neck? He asked. Someday I'll tell you, she promised. When they were teenagers, Jim asked the girl on a date. While they were drinking fraps, Jim asked again, Why do you wear that green ribbon around your neck? She said, Well, maybe if we ever get married, I'll tell you. Jim fell in love with the beautiful girl, and they got married. Jim loved her very much and they had a wonderful marriage. One day Jim got curious again and asked, We're married now, why do you wear that ribbon on your neck? She said, I'll tell you if we ever have kids. A couple of years later, a baby girl and a baby boy was born. Jim once again got curious and asked, Why do you wear that ribbon around your neck? She said, If you love me, you'll drop it for now. Someday, I'll tell you. Jim loved her with all his heart, so he dropped it and accepted that his wife wore a beautiful green ribbon around her neck all the time. They got old together, then the woman got very sick, went to the hospital, and the doctor said she would die. Her distraught husband sat by her side for days and finally said, Please, tell me now, why do you have that ribbon around your neck? In a croaky voice, she said, Okay, I'll tell you, take it off now. He pulled the bow loose, and her head fell off. A man checks in at a hotel for the weekend and takes his belongings to his room. The woman at the desk warns him to stay away from the first room on the right on his floor. Of course, he doesn't understand why but doesn't think much of it. On his way to his room, he peeks through the keyhole. There's an old lady with her eyes closed looking at the wall. Creeped out. The man goes about his business. When he wakes up the next day, he decides to look again. This time it's completely red on the other side. The man assumes the guest covered the keyhole with paper and goes to the front desk. He asks the woman why he shouldn't get near that door, and she says, there's a rumor a woman died there and that she now haunts the room. It's also said that she has glaring, red eyes. I found one a while ago. A woman lived alone with her dog, a large Doberman. One day, she came home, and her dog was choking on something. She attempted to dislodge the object in his throat, but she couldn't. She rushed the dog to the vet, who said he would work on the dog and call her later. Hours later, the woman gets a call from the vet. Get out of the house. The police are on the way. They will explain. He says in a hurried voice. Afraid. She runs out of the house. When the police arrive, they charge into the house and run upstairs. She asks one of the men what is happening. The vet found what your dog was choking on. It was three human fingers. A few minutes later, the police escorted a man out of her house. 
he clutched his right hand because he was missing three fingers. A girl is babysitting for a family. After she puts the kids to sleep, she lays in the parents' bed to watch TV. She looks into the corner of the room and notices a creepy clown statue with a wide grin. She turns her attention from the statue to the TV but is still bothered by it. After about an hour, she calls the children's father and asks, May I put a blanket over the clown statue in your room? It is starting to creep me out. To which the father replies, Grab the kids and get out. We don't own a clown statue. Police were called and never found a clown statue in the room. A man went to a hotel and walked up to the front desk to check in. The woman at the desk gave him his key and told him that on the way to his room, there was a door with no number that was locked, and no one was allowed in there. Especially no one should look inside the room under any circumstances. So he followed the instructions of the woman at the front desk, going straight to his room and going to bed. The next night his curiosity would not leave him alone in the room with no number on the door. He walked down the hall to the door and tried the handle. Sure enough, it was locked. He bent down and looked through the wide keyhole. Cold air passed through it, chilling his eye. He saw a hotel bedroom, like his, and in the corner was a woman whose skin was completely white. She was leaning her head against the wall, facing away from the door. He stared in confusion for a while. Out of curiosity, he almost knocked on the door but decided not to. This disinclination saved his life. He crept away from the door and walked back to his room. The next day, he returned to the door and looked through the wide keyhole. This time, all he saw was redness. He couldn't make anything out besides a distinct red color, unmoving. Perhaps the room inhabitants knew he was spying the night before and had blocked the keyhole with something red. At this point, he decided to consult the woman at the front desk for more information. She sighed and said, Did you look through the keyhole? The man told her that he had. And she said, well, I might as well tell you the story. A long time ago, a man murdered his wife in that room, and her ghost haunts it. But these people were not ordinary. They were white all over, except for their red eyes. A hiker was hiking up a mountain, but he misjudged his trail and the time it took to get back. He knew the trail was dangerous at night, and he was running out of light. He only had supplies for a day hike. Fortunately, he found a cabin. He wanted to see if he could spend the night there, so he knocked. When no one answered, he figured he'd break in, stay on the couch for the night, and leave a note in the morning with his information and an apology for breaking the lock. He didn't want to be in the cold outdoors that night. When he went in, he found these portraits all along one wall. They were the kind that seemed to follow you as you went, and they had these looks on their faces ranging from bemused to murderous. But the guy was tired and wanted to get home as soon as possible in the morning, so he fell into a restless sleep. The next day, feeling only slightly more rested than the night before, he packed up and left. On the hike, he couldn't shake off the feeling that he had forgotten something but didn't know what. Then he realized, as he left the cabin, he noticed that there weren't any portraits on the walls. A long-time druggie comes home one night and finds a brown paper bag on his kitchen counter. His doors were locked when he arrived, so he has no idea how someone could have put it there. On the bag was a sticky note with the words Do Try written on it. He opened the bag to find a single yellow pill. Why not, he thought. He's probably done worse. He takes the pill. It sends him, in his mind, to a world of complete darkness. No visual stimulus at all. His other senses are heightened, and he's relieved of the burden of light. Hours pass as he lies there, unmoving, with his blank mind to play with. He wakes up the next morning and opens his eyes. The light of day is blinding and bothersome. He wishes to return to his world of nothing to be free of the burden. When he goes into the kitchen, 
There is another bag. The note on it reads, Do try. In the bag was another yellow pill. He was very excited now. Maybe the supply would never end, and he could enjoy his empty world forever. He takes the pill. Once again, he is plunged into splendid darkness. No hint of light reaches him in his world. Then he painfully rams his hip into something. This had never happened before in his wonderful world. He feels it. It's cold and hard, just like the counter. He feels around, and he finds the brown bag. He grabs the kitchen curtains and rips them off the wall as he stumbles to the ground. This time, he isn't in his world. He's in his own house. And he's blind. A young girl named Lisa was often left alone at home because her parents worked late, so they bought her a dog to protect her and keep her company. One night Lisa was awakened by a constant dripping sound. She got up and went to the kitchen to turn off the tap properly. As she got back into the bed, she stuck her hand under the bed, and the dog licked it reassuringly. The dripping sound continued, so she went to the bathroom and turned off the tap properly in there too. She returned to her bedroom and again stuck her hand under the bed, and the dog licked it. But the dripping continued, so she went outside and turned off the taps out there. She came back to bed, stuck her hand under it, and the dog licked it again. Still, the dripping continued, drip, drip, drip. This time she listened and located the source of the dripping, it was coming from her cupboard. She opened the cupboard door and there was her dog hanging upside down with its neck cut, and written on the window inside the cupboard door was, Humans can lick too. It's supernatural, I believe. But it goes like this, there was a hunter in the woods, who, after a long day hunting, was in the middle of an immense forest. It was getting dark, and having lost his bearings, he decided to head in one direction until he was clear of the increasingly oppressive foliage. After what seemed like hours, he came across a cabin in a small clearing. Realizing how dark it had grown, he decided to see if he could stay there for the night. He approached and found the door ajar. Nobody was inside. The hunter flopped down on the single bed, deciding to explain himself to the owner in the morning. As he looked around, he was surprised to see the walls adorned with many portraits, all painted in incredible detail. Without exception, they appeared to be staring down at him, their features twisted into looks of hatred. Staring back, he grew increasingly uncomfortable. Making a concerted effort to ignore the many hateful faces, he turned to face the wall, and exhausted. He fell into a restless sleep. Face down in an unfamiliar bed, he turned blinking in unexpected sunlight. Looking up, he discovered that the cabin had no portraits, only windows. It's a creepy pasta thing story. He's reluctant to tell it because no one ever knows if it's true, seeing as they don't remember, but everyone insists that they tell the story except for one girl sitting on a stool. She wants to leave, but her boyfriend begs her to stay and hear it. They all close their eyes, and the storyteller starts talking about how the person who is about to disappear will feel a tingling sensation starting in the limbs. Then they will be frozen and unable to move etc. When it's over, everyone opens their eyes and laughs, seeing that everyone is still alive, and as they get up to leave, the stool gets kicked over. The girl who wanted to leave has disappeared, but no one remembers her. So one night, this little kid was left alone in his house cause his parents were going out to dinner. He was watching TV in his living room. This living room had a window behind the TV in which he could look at the outside. As he is watching TV, he sees a man wearing a hood outside the window trying to get inside the house. This man passes by, stares at the kid then continues, and he does this for a while. The kid decides to call his parents to let them know, but then his parents call him back, saying that the neighbors do not see anyone outside and that they are coming home ASAP. When they arrived, they noticed that the mom's jewelry was gone, but there were no broken windows or forced locks, 